Welcome to week three of Maya Angelou and the Freedom Poetry of Advent. We're excited to be here again today and we're all wearing our Christmas colors because we're just getting into the festive mood. And this week our readings are surrounding the topic of joy. Um, there is a, a section in our study book um, that says read and it shares the a, a joyful passage from the scripture readings and it's when Mary Magdalene um, talks about her joy about becoming a parent and she's she's referring to some scripture readings that are back in the Old Testament so the, like the words that she's saying are prophetic and they're profound because they're connected to prophecy and to the whole story that we find in the Bible. Is there anyone who has this page handy who would like to read that part called read? I do. Um, yeah. Me? Sure. Okay. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. For God has looked with favor on the loneliness of God's servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is God's name. God's mercy is for those who fear God from generation to generation. God has shown strength with her arm. She has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. She has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. God has helped her servant Israel in remembrance of her mercy, according to the promise she made to our ancestors, to Abraham and Sarah, and to their descendants forever. Luke 1, 46 to 55. What do you think as we see this piece of scripture today? Did anything pop out for you? The gender references for sure. God yeah. is with her mm -hmm. arm. Yeah. You know. Her servant, her mercy. Yeah, I appreciated that they chose to use uh, alternative pronouns for this this particular passage. Love it. So this is this is a very famous quote, and this is this is where we're starting from today in our reflection. So it's about Mary's joy and sharing that joy, and how her joy isn't just about having a baby. It's about what this baby represents and how it's connected to society, to prophecy, to everything, right? Um, okay, so it says here in our reflect part of our guidebook, alongside the candles of hope and peace, we light the candle of joy in the midst of a world of sorrow. Some call joy the secret of the gospel, since even the greatest faith or hope or peace or love if it lacks a sense of joy, it's not yet fully alive. As Angelo put it, joy is a freedom, a force that itself helps a person find liberation. And it challenges us. So can we sing a song of joy, a song of freedom, even in the, the shadows of sorrow? So today for our, our poem reading from Maya Angelou, so all of the poems that we're doing today, they're found in this book, which is like the complete Maya Angelou poetry. If anyone's got that book, it's on page 168. Um, and this poem is called Just Like Joe by Maya Angelou. So just, just the way that we usually do, I'd like us to first read it through and just see what speaks to us. If there's a word or a phrase or an image that just sort of pops up as we go through this poem. Um, let's let's just notice what we notice for the first reading, okay? Um, and is it all right if I call on you for uh, just each to do a paragraph at a time? Mm -hmm. okay. All right, Judy. Before we start, start Joy, oh, yeah. go ahead. Is the pronunciation Rose of Sharon or Sharon? I've always said Rose of Sharon. I'm not sure if I'm right though. Anyone else have any thoughts? I've always heard it as just Sharon. Okay. Where, where are we? <laughs> That's, That's down ways. Yeah. 
Good call, Marilyn, to be prepared just in case I called you for that paragraph. Good job. <laughs> just making sure there's no other tricky words. Okay. <laughs> I have my my brother's wife, her mother's name is Sharon. So she has Rows of Sharon in her garden. Right. So right. It's, just, it's nice to have a flower named after you, but just that's yeah. how I know. Like that's why in my family we call it Rose of Sharon. Could yeah. be wrong. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Just Like Joe by Maya Angelou. Judy, would you start us off? Oh. But also there's a, there's a church. Joe. My Lord, my Lord, long have I cried out to thee in the heat of the sun, the cool of the moon, my screams search the heavens for thee, my God. When my blanket was nothing but dew, rags and bones were all I owned. I chanted your name just like Job. Deb? Father, Father, my life give I gladly to thee, deep rivers ahead, high mountains above. My soul wants only your love, but fears gather round like wolves in the dark. Have you forgotten my name? O oh Lord, come to your child. O oh Lord, forget me not. Linda Bachman? You said to lean on your arm and I'm leaning. You said to trust in your love and I'm trusting. You said to call on your name and I'm calling. I'm stepping out on your word. Betty Ann? You said you'd be my protection, my only and glorious savior, my beautiful Rose of Sharon. And I'm stepping out on your word, joy, joy your word, joy. Joy, the wonderful word of the Son of God. Nadine? You said that you would take me to, your, to glory, to sit down at the welcome table. Rejoice with my mother in heaven, and I'm stepping out on your word. Marilyn? Into the alleys, into the byways, into the streets and the roads and the highways, past rumor mongers and midnight ramblers, past the liars and the cheaters and the gamblers. On your word, on your word. On the wonderful world of the Son of, pardon me, word of the Son of God, I'm stepping out on your word. Just take a moment to again, look through and see what jumps out at you. And when you're ready, just please start sharing what you've noticed. <laughs> Quite aside from the meaning of the poem, it struck me when I was reading it aloud and I didn't notice it reading it silently, how she switches into some kind of rhyming scheme there. The byways and the highways and the, the ramblers and the gamblers. Like, why did she do that? Hmm. I don't think it was just by accident. <laughs> It's funny, that's the one part of the poem where I feel like I can hear her in my head reading it, you know, mm -hmm. that I can just hear her, her rich voice sharing. I don't know, I think it's lovely to say because it's got that connection, that sort of rhymingness, but I just, there's, you're right, there's something special about that last part. When my, when my blanket was nothing but do, I, uh, I, I, I feel that, that chill, that loneliness, that, uh, that nothingness, uh, that hitting, hitting my low points. Yeah. The other one is, but fears gather round like wolves in the dark. Okay, that really stuck out for me too. Yeah. And the desperation in the line, my screams searched for heavens for thee. Not a quiet um, voice, but loudly screaming. Mm -hmm. 
For me, it was deep rivers ahead, high mountains above. My soul wants only your love. Yep, that's my thought too. Those are my my words. Really? Especially my soul wants only your love. Lindy, what's yours? I was struck by the, the stanzas. You said to lean on your arm, I'm leaning to trust and I'm trusting and to call on your name and I'm calling. It's um, it's the, the, he says, or they say to do and you're following it. It's that putting into action what, what they've been, what, what's sort of going on and not asking us too very much. You know, it's just, I'm there, let's go ahead. Yeah, I think for me, it's the, the beginning talks all about the fear, the screams and the dread and the mountains and the rivers and the wolves. And then it says, you, you said you'd be my protection mm -hmm. and I'm stepping out on your, on your words. So the contrast to the fear is the, the protection offered and the joy. Everyone had a chance to share? Mine is, I'm stepping out on your word. I just, I like that, I, that, that way of saying it, that phrasing, you know, rather than saying like, I'm taking a leap of faith. Like, I think I'm gonna go around saying it now. Like, I'm stepping out on your word. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> And that's repeated through yes. yeah. several times, at least five times. Mm -hmm. and that was the one that I found the most puzzling to grasp what it meant, but you explained it very well. I was, I was like, what does that mean? So thank you. And uh, even the, just that phrase on your word, like you want to say in your word or about, but on your word, like that was confusing to me. If anybody looked up um, just online, I'm stepping out on your word. Uh, stepping out on your word comes in other songs and, and poems. And, and I heard three different singing versions of it, which was really lovely to hear. Well, if you ever get a chance, mm. just check it out. Mm. Judy, how many extra hours of homework have you been doing to prepare? <laughs> I have so many extra hours. <laughs> when we grew up, she was the keener. <laughs> that took me like three minutes. No. <laughs> and one was a, uh, a choir from San Francisco, a gay choir of men. It was just, it was beautiful, but they just kept repeating that one stanza. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Can you send us the link? Oh, if you just if you just search okay stepping out on your word okay you'll see yeah mm. I'd have to I'd have to do more homework Deb <laughs> <You'll find it. laughs> and when you think of people saying you know I'll take you on your word that you're not asking for something concrete that you can hold or that they've signed off or anything like that it's just you accept them it's fate. You don't ask, you don't ask for anything else, just the acceptance of what they said. I I equate it to faith. Mm -hmm. Well, just following on what Linda just said, yeah, I th I thought of it as faith as well. Like just before the first time she says, "I'm stepping out on your word," she's saying, "You you said to lean on your arm, and I'm leaning." That to trust in your love and I'm trusting. So that's that's faith, right? God has told us, you know, to trust God and to trust where we're being led, right? So that's I feel like that that's sort of the turning point in the poem for me. When you know, even though there's all of these fears and wolves around and all of that, right? But but she 
just like, hey, God said we can lean on God. So let's do it. Let's see what happens, right? And then after one step, you know, it just you start traveling in in faith, right? Anyway, that's how I, I sort of interpreted it. But um, I want us to still stay in sort of an open place where we're letting the poem speak to us. So I invite us again to read it together. And this time let's listen for the message or the gift that this poem is offering us today, like individually. So just, um, we're gonna start fresh and again, just see what becomes present, see what really captures you, see what speaks to your soul. Linda Cowan, can you start? My Lord, my Lord, long have I cried out to thee. In the heat of the sun, the cool of the moon, my screams search the heavens for thee. My God, when my blanket was nothing but dew, rags and bones, were all I own, I chanted your name, just like Job. Karen? Would you read that? Father, Father, my life give I gladly to thee. Deep rivers ahead, high mountains above. My soul wants only your love, but fears gather round like wolves in the dark. Have you forgotten my name? O oh Lord, come to your child. O oh Lord, forget me not. <clears throat> Heather? You said to lean on your arm, and I'm leaning. You said to trust in your love, and I'm trusting. You said to call on your name, and I'm calling. I'm stepping out on your word. Marilyn. You said you'd be my protection, my only and glorious savior, my beautiful Rose of Sharon, and I'm stepping out on your word. Joy, joy, your word. Joy, joy, the wonderful word of the Son of God. Deb. You said that you would take me to glory, to sit down at the welcome table. Rejoice with my mother in heaven, and I'm stepping out on your word. Betty Ann. Into the alleys, into the byways, into the streets and the roads and the highways, past rumor mongers at midnight ramblers, past the liars and the cheaters and the gamblers, on your word, on your word, on the wonderful word of the Son of God, I'm stepping out on your word. So just take some time again to, to read through it if you need to. And when there's a piece that's speaking to your soul, if you'd like to share it with the rest of us, please feel free to go ahead. You know, when you think of joy, quite often it's very big, it's loud, it's, it's vibrant. But here, joy is, is a quiet joy that actually almost seems to have more meaning because it's something that um, is much more personal than what we often think of as joy. We look at all the Christmas carols that talk of this as joy to the world. It's big, it's huge. But this is a very quiet joy, one that is more inside of me than just being out in front that I see. It's, it's a very subtle joy. It's really trippy to hear you say that since I'm your daughter and my name is Joy. Sorry, <laughs> just messing with my head. I hope Joy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can tie in with that in that when I was thinking of this week and the advent and joy, I, 
like I, I felt like it, whatever you were going to read was going to be explosive. Mm -hmm. and, and I, because, and joy is one of it's my, full. my favorite words. Like I, I often use it and feel like if I'm thinking, offering joy, wishes to something, my heart just feels like it's exploding. And in this, I, I read it like the first couple of times I'm reading it, I'm thinking this, this, I'm having trouble finding the joy. And, and so yeah. as Linda said, it is quiet, it's subtle. Mm -hmm. um, it's there, she, but it, it wasn't the explosion that I was thinking would be with this. I can't, I, so I shouldn't have pre-thought. But anyway, that's... Don't, don't think. <laughs> don't think. <laughs> Thanks. I'm feeling unsure that Maya Angelou has found the joy. Like she's saying that she's trusting and she's leaning on, on uh, God's arm and calling God's name and she's stepping out on the word, but has it produced results? Like I, I just feel unsure that it has. And uh, what about the reference to Job? Because I mean, the, the title is just like Job. And when I think of Job, I think of, you know, you think of the patience of Job and all of the horrible things that went wrong with Job and um, the famine and the, the deaths in his family, but he still had faith and he was still there and he still, you know, didn't give up um, on his faith. So I don't know if we can equate that or not to, I mean, she obviously thought of Job in some way when she was writing this. That's sort of how it hit me too, Judy. Like, and I also thought of Ecclesiastes where it says that God put eternity in our hearts and combined with that and Job's experience of just being stripped bare, it's like, mm -hmm. All that matters is that we're in communion with God. That's sort of how it hit me too, because Job was just, there was nothing else that mattered, but yeah. just that communion with God. And I'm wondering about the reference to the Rose of Sharon. Does that, where does that fit in or where is that from? Mm -hmm. I don't have an answer for that. Does anyone else have a, a thought maybe why? I just looked up Rose of Sharon to see of course you did. what it looked like. It sort of looks like a hibiscus, like it's, you know, like you would yeah. know because we've got it. Is that what it is? Yeah. 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 I don't know. If you think back to the Carol Low How a Rose there. Rose of Blue. Right. I love, and, love that. Yeah. And it, it comes back from that, and it's like this all of a sudden we have this wonderful thing amongst us, this thing of beauty. Okay. Um, and that's how I took that with, I always sort of think of the Rose of Sharon as, as the Rose of Christmas. And, and sometimes it's referred to such where we get this beautiful flower coming out mm -hmm. of sort of the despair in that we get this beauty. And the line before it is my only and glorious savior. So mm -hmm. that, that would fit. I just wasn't sure if there was a specific reference for that. I think for the message for me was um, the searching, uh, you know, the desperation and searching for and yearning for that communion and and finally just out of exhaustion letting that go and and just trusting um just just trusting and um, letting just letting go of that that constant searching and allowing it to be what it is right now and so and and going with faith so that's sort of what i came out of this with I found a very personal message in the one that I happened to be asked to read. Um, and uh, you said to lean, you said to trust, uh, you said to call, and I'm stepping out on your word. And I just found it a personal message for me there somehow. And um, I, I feel a little excited about it, actually. And I, I don't know if I've ever been <laughs> really excited about something that's referring to... Um, to what I hear 
in the Bible or, or whatever. <clears throat> For anyone who hasn't shared yet. Um, for me, what, what sparked interest this time was the word joy, not just because it's my name, but the, <laughs> the idea that I'm stepping out on your word and then she wrote joy, joy. So the word joy to me is the word that she's stepping out on. And when you think of all the other potential words that she could have chosen like peace or love or hope like just even thinking of advent words right but she chose joy and joy is the one of them that you can't control that you um it's really more of a gift it's something that arises from within right or it, from a situation like it's not something you can manufacture or fake right the joy is to me is that sort of that really authentic um being in the moment and feeling that the moment is good and that the moment is God filled. Um, so that's that's what personally spoke to me. Um, one of the earlier questions was talking about like, why is this, um, why is this poem called Just Like Job? Um, and I'm sure there's actually many reasons. Um, I, I just wanna read you a piece from the book of Job, um, just as something to think about. And this is this is early on in the story with Job. And um, there's a there's one little piece in it, you know, it talks about fearing the Lord or fearing God. For me, whenever I hear that, you know, that we should fear the Lord, I don't think that it's about being afraid of God. I think that it's about following God's will, you know, and I, I usually interchange the word with loving God, right? Because that just makes more sense to the way that I use language. So just when you hear that, maybe switch the word around and don't think of it as um, being actually afraid of God, but just see what you think when you hear this one part. So we're at the very beginning of the book of Job. Um, the first paragraph is talking about how Job's life is totally awesome. He's got these great kids. He's got lots of wealth and farm animals, and there's all sorts of stuff going on. And then one day the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan was also among them. Actually, you know what? In I remember now in seminary, we didn't call it Satan. We call it the Satan because it's, we don't really believe in the embodiment of the, the, the evil and all that. But okay, we're just going to call it Satan for right now. We can talk about what it means later. All right. So Satan was there among them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? And Satan answered the Lord from going to and from the earth and from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. Then Satan answered the Lord, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not put a fence around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land, but stretch out your hand now and touch all that he has and you will see that he will turn around and curse you to his face, to your face. And the Lord then said to Satan, oh, very well, everything that he owns, you, it's now within your power. You can do whatever you want with it, everything that he owns and everything that is his, but promise me that you're not going to, you know, kill him or hurt him yourself, right? And so, and then Satan went out, you know, and what happens then in the story is Satan does his worst and like, you know, all the crops and the livestock are destroyed. His family, unfortunately, is killed. You know, everything goes wrong. And then he also gets, he gets ill and he's got all these sores all over his body. So his health is gone as well. His family, everything that he loved is gone. Um, the reason why I'm sharing this with you is going back to that sentence of what Satan said to, to the Lord says, does Job fear God for nothing, right? Meaning that why does Job follow God? Why is Job an upright person? Um, is it because he loves God? Or is it because he's afraid of God or because he just wants to look right, you know, in society? Like, why is it that Job actually listens to and follows God? So that's why Job loses everything to see if he really does love God and if he'll still love God, even if he loses it all. Right. Or whether to see whether his his appreciation and his faith was based on the fact that he had a pretty sweet life up until that point. Does that make sense? Are you still sort of following where I'm at with this? 
So mm -hmm. that's that's the setting for the book of Job and then all of the drama that ensues after mm -hmm. that. Um, and here, like we've been talking how this poem is very much about faith, right? Like you said to lean on me, so I'm leaning. You said to call on my name, so I'm calling and I'm stepping out on your joy. To me, that takes it to the next level. So you're not just being faithful and stepping out into faith. If you step out into joy, that means that you are in 100%, right? You can't fake joy. You can't have like 50% joy. You were like all in, right? Think of the last time when you were like exceedingly joyful, even if it was a while ago. And remember that feeling how it's like all consuming, right? And in that moment when you're feeling joy, all of your fears and all of your worries and that are just set aside and you are just in the moment and you are loving that moment and being present to it. So to, that's that's where I see her going with this poem. Like um, she, in some ways, this poem, this this person who is who is wanting to be just like Job is taking it that step further. Like because when we find out when we read the book of Job, honestly, it just becomes a big theological debate, and I don't ever get the sense that Job is fully loves God like Job has faith that God is going to show up and talk to him about what's going on you know and explain everything but uh, this poem seems to take it to the next level which is you know what I'm not just going to just say I'm going to follow God I'm not just going to go through the motions instead I'm going to engage with joy and I'm going to trust that God is going to be there for me and is going to offer me joy in return so that's what I get when I read this poem today. And so if any of that is helpful for you or just makes you go in a different direction, great. Um, and I'm not saying I'm right, it's just, you're right. When I first read this poem, I was like, why is this in the week of joy? <laughs> you know, this does not seem to be an Advent poem or anything at all, especially for joy week. Um, but I think it's because for her, she's taken faith to such a deep level that it actually becomes joy right? That her spiritual journey with God, no matter what's happening, is a joyful one because it's with God. So it, that kind of makes sense now when you see the beginning is about the fear, you know, the wolves and the... Oh. Sorry, no, I just found the music, but go oh. ahead. I'm just going to play it for you. <laughs> The wolves and the broke on fear. Just... and then um, after after the joy part, then um, the fear is no longer there. You know, to me, the ending because then um, she can step out into the alleys and the byways and the streets because she knows the fear has passed. Yeah. You know, and the faith and the trust is there, and uh, she can go. She, we, he. Can, can go out past everything because it's on your word, on your word. Oh, I'm stepping out on your word. Hi, Linda. Bye, thanks. Bye. 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 I think it ties together with the last week's word, peace, because when we experience peace, joy is almost like a natural byproduct or we're, we have the freedom to really step into joy when we have peace. Like to me, they go together hand in hand. Deb, do you think you have to know peace or you have to actually be in a peaceful place in your life in order to experience joy? No, but I think when we get to a place of being at peace, sometimes within a storm or really hard places, but when it goes back to that essence of her poem and of Job of just like longing for God and all else pales. So it's just like that single focus focused. And when it's so single focused, I think peace is a result of that. Mm -hmm. So I don't think things have to be perfect for it, but it's just, it's almost like um, sifting. Like, you know, when we think of our farming analogy, when you just sift and everything else falls away, but just that wheat, it's sort of like that. The wheat is just that deep longing for God. From mm -hmm. that comes peace. And then I think we're free to just lean into joy. Our joy is just a natural ramification of that. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Judy, I know you're waiting. Go ahead. Share with us the song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't song. know. We'll just see. Call on your name. And I'm calling. 
You said to trust in your word. And Lord, I'm trusting. You said to lean on your arm and cry, I'm leaning. I'm stepping out on your word. You said to call on your name and I'm calling. You said to trust in your word and I'm trusting you said to lean on your arm and i'm leaning i'm stepping out on your word you said you be my protection <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I think this is a perfect time for us to join together in a prayer. Let us pray. God of delight, God of celebration, God of good news, of great joy for all people. We pray for your world so full of sorrows. Let us weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. Most of all, let us sing with Mary of how you delight in lifting up the lowly, scattering the proud, and filling the hungry with good things. Come, Jesus. Come. Amen. <laughs>